Good morning. It's the last day of term, an end of term like no other in our school's long history. Because of the school holidays, we're never here for the major Christian festival of Easter anyway. So in that respect, at least, what we're doing today is familiar. It's our custom to mark Easter with two services, one now and one at the beginning of next term. Today, we focus on the story of the crucifixion. We'll hear readings from the Bible about the death of Jesus. The hymns and the prayers draw our attention to the Christian conviction that the death of Christ was the central event of the whole of time, in which he took upon himself the burden of the world's wrong, yours and mine, and was struck down by God in our place. On the first Good Friday when that happened, the sky went dark, the earth shook, and Jesus' followers ran away. For a time, it was all over. Between Good Friday and Easter Day, the Christian Church considers itself to be in abeyance. On that day, Holy Saturday, there is no life, there is no church, there is nothing. It is death's day of victory. To represent that, it's the custom in churches to remove all the symbols of light and life and hope. And that's what we will do at the end of this service. Because this is our commemoration of Good Friday. And at the end, we'll put out the candles, throw a veil over the cross on the holy table behind me, close the rear ados doors and lay down the processional cross. And then this service doesn't really end, it just stops. There is no blessing because there is no one to bless us. We don't turn towards the holy table because in a God-forsaken world there is no holiness. We don't face the cross because the one it reminds us of is dead. We just go. Then, like those first disciples, we wait. Unlike them, we know what the second part of this story will be. But we shall have to wait until next term for our celebration of Easter Day. In the year 2020, this long Holy Saturday brings an almost unbearable poignancy because we literally don't know when we will be here again in person. Our experience is just a little bit closer to that of the first disciples, laying Jesus in the tomb, not knowing what the future would hold. We do know, though, that on Monday, April the 20th, I will invite you to join me on video once again as I restore the signs of life to this chapel and to celebrate with me the glorious resurrection. But that's for the future. It's Good Friday today. We begin with prayers of confession. Please join in as indicated in the words on the screen. God has shown his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have failed you as your apostles did, and we ask for your mercy and help. When we put selfish gain before right action, Christ have mercy. Lord, forgive us and help us. When we fail to stand beside those who are in need or in pain, Christ have mercy. Lord, forgive us and help us. When we allow our interest in material things to overshadow our spiritual life, Christ have mercy. Lord, forgive us and help us. When we fail to offer our lives in service to others as you offered yourself for us, Christ have mercy. Lord, forgive us and help us. Cleanse us from our sins by your precious blood and graciously restore us to your service for your praise and glory. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, may God have mercy on you, pardon you and set you free. 
Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. May God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this, your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of the wicked and to suffer death on the cross, yet who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. assembly rose and led Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor, and they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Christ, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. Pilate announced to the chief priest and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. It was the custom at the feast to release one prisoner to the people. With one voice they cried out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. But they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he spoke to them. Why? 
What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released Barabbas, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the school, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain on the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, 
praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they went away. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The woman who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. They went home and prepared spices and perfumes. Then they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. A wooden table with a veiled cross, gold leaf entombed in purple's dull confine, dead candles and the organ silent pipes, emblems of non-existence, absence, loss. Now night prevails and dust and darkness reign among the brickwork where our days begin. No light, no life, 
No voices raised in song, the day of heaven's silence comes again. Yet these are but the signs of yesterday, the sad reminders of a passing night. The shadow falls, but then shall fall away. The sun that sets will rise in glorious might, and scattered friends will surely soon return to hail the dawning of tomorrow's light.